this, many scholars made a clear division between an online world and an offline world. Today, it has been demonstrated that this line is not that clear. Indeed, every day it is becoming more and more diffuse. Nowadays, a virtual world is converged with a physical space. Thus, digital media are used not only by ordinary users as a form of communication and entertainment, but also by political activists to spread their word and organize social mobilizations. Although the space where the action takes place and where these social movements develop is still the streets, it is of extreme importance to analyze how contemporary activism incorporate and use social media tools within its protests. In response to this, Paolo Gerbaudo in his book Tweets and the Streets conducts a research that brings very interesting findings to the topic. Through the analysis of three key movements during 2011, the Arab Spring, Indignados protests in Spain and the Occupy movement, Gerbaldo draws the scenario of those and assesses the role of social media in terms of mobilization to the action in these three cases. Occupy Wall Street! Occupy Wall Street! You are reinventing, you are reinventing our political universe! Our political universe! You have renewed! You have I think that the 2011 wave of protests from the Arab Spring to the Indignados in Spain to Occupy Wall Street was very successful in its own right because after a moment of uh, apathy, a long time in which somehow protest was out of the picture, out of the news, they uh, brought millions of people to the streets, millions of people to the square and they really grab the attention of tens of millions of people, hundreds of millions of people around the world about very important issues, about the issue mainly of democracy, about the fact that being under the dictatorship, as in the case of Egyptians under Mubarak, or being under a nominal democracy, as in the case of Spain and the US, citizens don't have those rights that they are supposed to have. They don't have a say in the politics that affect them. They don't have a way to control the economy, they don't have a way to control the decisions that they affect their lives. In a sense, those movements were very effective. They were very effective as a voice of the people, as a moment of popular reunion, as an event in which the people, the sovereign people, came together in public squares and said, we had enough, we have enough of this. We don't want this to go on. On the other hand, however, it is also evident that these movements have faced a number of very serious problems or very serious difficulties that have led them to their uh, rapid disappearance. Uh, this was seen in the case of Egypt with the fact that after the revolutions, after the revolution, uh, electoral gain began whereby attention moved from the streets to the ballot boxes and at that point the movement started dividing itself between Islamists and seculars, eventually allowing for the army to come back and to regain power, as it happened with the 3rd of July 2013 coup d'etat that ousted the democratically elected president uh, Mohamed Morsi. It was seen in Spain, though in Spain I think it is the strongest movement of the three, in the sense that the indignados did not really disappear in a way they were they transformed themselves in new movements, in the civic waves, in the Maria Ciudadanas, which began since the end of like 2012. They transformed, they became, the movement became more single issue in a way, uh, attention moved more from the general question of democracy to the question of uh, the desahucios, uh, the um, uh, expulsion of people from their houses, uh, from, to the housing situation, which was possibly uh, the one that people felt was the direst of all the issues suffered by the Spanish people. In the case of Occupy Wall Street, Occupy Wall Street possibly we can speak of the case in which this process of disappearance, this tendency towards volatility, towards vanescence was the strongest. Uh, the movement uh, 
left the public squares in November after a wave of evictions because of the repression of police, because of the repression of the New York Police Department and various police forces around the country. And after being evicted from public space, it didn't manage to organize itself in any way besides uh, the encampment. It didn't manage to invent new tactics that would have allowed the movement to maintain a continuity beyond that necessarily exceptional moment of popular gathering in public space. I think that social movements are always a product of their times. They always reflect the structure, the form of social experience, and the dilemmas of social experience of a given historical time. And movements also reflect the forms of communication, the forms of culture, the forms of youth aggregation of the specific historical moment which they navigate. Uh, the movements of the 60s utilize radios, they utilize uh, uh, the free press, the radical press, the movements of the notice of the 2000s necessarily need to use the media of the day. And the media of the day are social network sites. They are Facebook, they are Twitter, they are Tumblr, and so on and so forth. Um, therefore, in a somehow asking whether they would have existed without media is, in a way, is a bit of a false question, right? Because uh, it is as if technology was an alien product coming from outer space, while it is part and parcel of our society. Therefore, it is somehow obvious that social movements utilize these technologies for mobilizing people. Uh, then, obviously, the use of the technology brings about a number of important consequences. There are affordances, that is, that there are properties inherent in the technology which induce, that is, favor and uh, elicit a certain type of action. These technologies are technologies that are, to start with, quite individualizing. They uh, involve people in communication as individuals. Uh, social media accounts are based on the premise that an individual will utilize that account as most uh, clearly manifested in the case of Facebook where everybody has his profile picture, his wall, his hair wall, his hair messages, right? What was crucial in these movements was transfiguring the individual into the collective, moving from this individualizing architectural communication into a collective sense of belonging, into a collective motivation to participate, into a collective political passion that could make of all those individuals not just unique individuals in the networks, not just uh, irreducible nodes in the network, but, par uh, but particles in the mass. Uh, individuals who could renounce partly to the, their identity in order to participate in something bigger than themselves, in a subject uh, often called the people, the citizens, yeah. and similar definitions as it happens in these movements. So that was the critical, discursive, cultural element that allowed activists to make the best out of Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, and other tools. Uh, they utilized not much their power for fast in information circulation and diffusion, but rather their power of aggregation their capacity to unify people around common interests, uh, around common issues, around common causes, in a way that ultimately subverted the individualizing tendencies uh, these media have been built with. I completely see emotions as something central to social movements. Uh, communication is not just information, it is affect. It is the building of an emotional tie uh, within the community of protesters. What holds protesters together is this sense of being one, is this sense of unity, which has very profound emotional connotations to it. Uh, the language is this of these movements is pervaded with emotional terms. Uh, activists in Spain said that the 15th the 15th of May, Indignados movement, was an emotional mood, that it was kept together by this sense of emotionality, this sense of commitment, this sense that we are together, together against, 
together against the elites, together against the bankers, together against the politicians, together against the corrupts. Right? So I think that these movements clearly show that emotions need to be, be brought back to radical politics, it's if radical politics has to be successful. And that emotions can be the driver of mass mobilization, of a mobilization that doesn't just mobilize the already converted, the people in the activist ghetto, but really reaches out to people who possibly have no prior experience of protest. In a way, I think that Manuel Castells himself converted himself to this idea of emotions because in his early work he's quite cognitivist, he's quite uh, obsessed instead with information, with the circulation of information, with data, uh, and to the point where he talks about social brain, right, where he's somehow too obsessed with the idea of the internet as a brain, therefore as a cognitive function, as an intellect. And in so doing, forgets the body, bodily element, the corporeal element of uh, uh, internet communication, of social movements, the fact that they are not just about cognitive ties, informational ties, but they are also about emotional ties, ties between bodies coming together as a super organism, as a body that is the sum and more than the sum of many bodies. I think that this idea of horizontality, alongside similar ideas as leaderlessness or assertions about the participatory character of contemporary movements, tell us more about the value system of these movements, their system of belief, their vision of utopia, the kind of society they would like to build, than about the actual reality of social movements, the way in which they work here and now, so to speak, that internal life of social movements. Uh, while many leaders and activists, also scholars as Manuel Castells and pundits as Paul Mason are arguing that these movements are leaderless, that they are horizontal, what we see within them is in fact the rise of new forms of leadership. Leadership that is not formalized, is not bureaucratic, nobody has elected these people, there is no office for these people, but it's leadership that as leadership has been for several decades in social movements is characterized by a charismatic character is based on charisma, that is on the ability of these people to be recognized as leaders by participants and supporters because of their ability to communicate, because of the emotional bond that they managed to construct with movement participants. We see that taking different forms. We see that uh, with the rise of micro-celebrities, Twitter activist celebrities with large followings, able to mobilize bases towards different actions, and we see that in the rise of new forms of collective leadership, as epitomized by the role played by social media teams. Social media teams are groups of activists ranging between 2 to 20 people that have been very important in various movements that I've uh, analyzed in my work, in the Arab Spring, in the Indignados, in Occupy Wall Street, where they've been responsible for managing official social media accounts of the movement official Twitter channels of Occupy Wall Street, official Facebook pages and Twitter accounts of the Indignados, Democracia Realia, and other key protest organizations, the Kulina Khaled Said Facebook page in Egypt. And these groups have played a very important role that is reminiscent of historical movement vanguards, right? as Leninist vanguards, but also as vanguards in many other social movements. That is, close-knit group of leaders leadership teams, as described by uh, sociologist Marshall Gantz, who, working together, collaborating together within these groups, act as collective leaders, act as a collective organization responsible for influencing and directing collective action. For example, by setting certain campaign slogans, by uh, circulating certain images that are likely to uh, excite people, to get them involved, by uh, proposing certain dates for protests, by constructing certain events. Uh, all these people, um, both individually and collectively, have played a very clear leadership role. Uh, that demonstrates the fact that far from having disappeared in a digital world, leadership is still very much part of the picture. What 
we are seeing now is that people, after long years, after long, I would say even decades, in which they saw bureaucratic organizations as something to move away from, they are going back to um, the idea that, yeah, for certain things we need formal organizations. For certain things we need to develop clear hierarchical structures in which you know who the leader is, you vote for the leader, and you have clear mechanisms to get rid of the leader once you're tired of the leader, once the leader has run its course, when it is, its usefulness for the movement has expired. Yeah. This doesn't mean that social movements all need to become that. Social movements should continue being what they are, but what they should do is to get rid of this dogma of leaderlessness of, of, uh, and horizontality, of the, this pretense that there are no leaders as such, something that has been uh, very detrimental for them. With Facebook being a recruitment tool, a tool by means of which the movement attracts new people and mobilizes people, and Twitter being the movement headquarters, that is a more elitist space in which activists, journalists, bystanders are commenting about the movement and sometimes they are indeed using it for tactical coordination, for telling people, you know, the police is coming from this street, you should be careful going that way, and so on and so forth. I think that what is important to realize there that if you is that if you look at all these movements, there is something very clear that Facebook was the mm, tool, was the king tool of mobilization, far more than Twitter. Um, activists and academics and people of you know libertarian beliefs, uh, cosmopolitan people uh, are in love with Twitter, and sometimes they tend to overestimate the potential of Twitter. <laughs> Tweets and the Streets presents a solid empirical work which approaches the reader to a better understanding on the role of social media in contemporary social movements. It constitutes a study that has much to offer around the discussions of social media and activism.